Hello everyone. Um, this is a really exciting conversation that we're going to have today. Um, and it's basically uh, one of the easiest and most profound ways to understand the planet. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot of detailed discussion on understanding the population of the planet. Um, one of the reasons for that um, is not only the complexity of all the billions and billions of people um, that live on the planet, um, but also just how we understand it. Um, so this is just one way of understanding the population, but there is so many different ways. And as you're, as you're gonna see <clears throat> in these maps, um, that there is quite a number of different perspectives. Um, and we actually use different types of maps um, to help us understand the population. So I'm going to go ahead and load up some of these and give people some time um, to first digest um, everything that's going on. So we're going to try to go through um, essentially all the details for the planet. Um, some of these maps are extremely detailed. Um, and like I said, uh, you might sit back there and say, hey, uh, what's going on here on our planet? Um, what is the population footprint? And um, this is very, there's a lot of really surprising things um, when you first start to look at these maps. Um, and there's so many different variety of these maps. And there's actually one um, that I didn't include that I really like. Um, it's actually one of my favorite ones that I usually use when I do a discussion about how the Earth um, is. Uh, but basically, uh, this has all been diagrammed out, and you can see there's actually different lines on each of these. So the patterns that we understand uh, from a pure population perspective may actually be different um, depending on how you uh, highlight the data. Um, if you're looking at water or tree coverage, um, how we outline that might be very different as well. Um, and some of the data shows up a little bit easier in some maps than others. And uh, I wanted to start off by a simple detail that I just noticed here um, that I want people to really understand is that rural population really matters a lot. Although most of the big circles that we're gonna do, um, this is the population area, you'll see out west, we almost have no population. It looks like there's no population there, right? Um, even on this map here, it looks like there's very few people out west. But yet, when you think of California, uh, Seattle, uh, Los Angeles, um, it's actually very significant on the west coast. Um, so when you live in these large cities, um, but yet there's just so much uh, vast land out there in the mountains, hills that is not really populated. So it raises some really interesting questions that you might not even, that I don't even completely understand, right? So I'm familiar with California, I've lived in California. Um, some of my family lives out there. Uh, and then my other family lives out in Boston right now. And then I grew up in Chicago. So I'm familiar with the United States, but when you look at the population here, um, it's really nothing compared to what is going on in the whole entire planet, right? We have only uh, maybe half a billion, right? 300 and something million uh, people in the United States, but that's a half a billion compared to the whole population of the entire planet, which is billions and billions. Um, and you can see Africa, Europe, um, Asia, and all these other details here. So we're gonna try to get into these, and believe it or not, uh, this map is extremely detailed as we zoom in here. You'll see um, that's what we're gonna do, is kind of diagram out each of these. I wish I could diagram this one, um, but unfortunately, it doesn't save the colors correctly. Uh, there's kind of a bug on the Worldview uh, website. Um, and this one is really fun to diagram too. Um, it'd be nice to go back and redo some of these diagrams uh, for some of these other ones. The farming one is extremely important. So although it shows bright, bright blue here, we're gonna primarily stick to this map uh, when understanding this, um, but it would be really helpful um, to realize that the population of the rural population is extremely important. And, and if you're doing rural population, a farming map may be extremely helpful. You see that in Europe, essentially what's happened is that all the populated areas have become both farmland and people, and we probably expect that in the United States. So when you compare the futuristic population map to today's population map, you really have to overlay the po 
the farming map. So let me repeat that. The farming map is very vital um, to understanding the future population. Um, so not a lot of people are talking about that on the internet. And again, this is the perhaps the most detailed study um, ever done. I've never seen anyone uh, do a video discussion this detailed about population. So um, if you've gone through some of my discussions before, uh, they might last a little while. Um, so get, get your head screwed on straight and try to figure out what's going on here. Um, and see about the entire planet. So we're gonna go through all these maps uh, in just a moment, and we're gonna start with this map, um, and it may take quite some time um, to kind of compare these. Thank you so much, I'll be right back. So hi everybody, I just got myself some water. Um, what originally started this um, is really the need to work together uh, around the planet. So no matter what kind of job you're doing, um, we looked at the river maps, that's extremely helpful, um, but the population maps really start to give you a different picture um, because humans don't always necessarily just depend on the rivers. They can do uh, irrigation and some weird stuff um, that kind of changes the population dynamics and who you want to work with. So the interesting thing is that each of these circles are kind of work areas um, and population zones. So for example, West Africa, and I didn't really do Central Africa. It's just so complicated. There's kind of these um, cross passageways. Here you have kind of a passageway across the depths of the Congo jungle. You don't really see that in Brazil. You kind of see a sliver through here. Um, and if I were to mark that out, um, we would zoom in a little bit and show that. But And then again, you see some weird stuff going on in India and Pakistan, right? Just a huge amount of people in Pakistan. Um, that you don't really typically think. And if you combine that, like Nigeria here, um, and then East Africa, Uganda, Rwanda, you start to see um, huge amounts of population, as well as down here in Java. So there's certain areas um, that definitely have a lot of population. Uh, and if I were to zoom in, you could kind of see even more detail um, on this. So as I got myself some food here, I wanted to remind everybody that there's a difference between, this is today's population map. How do we, ask yourself, how do we understand what the future of population might be? Um, this little section, Russia, kind of gives us a huge key to that. Because this map here only shows population, it does not show farming. And if you look carefully, <clears throat> this footprint here actually is wider by maybe about 50%. Um, and it actually shows almost the same footprint, meaning that population and farming is very closely related in terms of futuristic planning. <coughs> you can almost stop the video there <coughs> and grab the farming map <coughs> and just be like, wow, this is the way the future might look um, in the next few generations. So food is vital. Um, so what does that say? Interesting thing is it shows that the United States will probably continue on to grow and most of that will happen up into Canada, believe it or not. Um, so around the world, you can see that there's different ideas. High density farming will probably be happening in Africa, incidentally, right? So you don't see the footprint you actually see the jungle being maybe kept, um, but there's probably gonna be more high density farming, particularly in West Africa. Um, and then East Africa, maybe not as much, it might be more like in South America or even in Argentina. You can see there's high density farming down here in Argentina, as well as different parts of Brazil. And the question is, where is India and China gonna get their food? They'll probably also have to do high density farming, but you'll see there's quite a lot of places up into North Korea, meaning that probably Korea will be a big part of the future of population growth um, just because of the farming land up here. So you see some of that population here already starting to spread on just the pure population map. So I wanted to emphasize, take a look at both. This is the water map, so you can see the aquifers here. Um, and take a look at a variety of these maps before we get too detailed. Um, now, I wanted to stop here um, because sometimes uh, with irrigation, um, it requires electricity. 
um, or some kinds of power for um, just living out in wherever you're living. So actually, this shows a really different picture of Europe, um, especially when you think about nuclear power generation uh, and hydroelectric, um, which primarily happens in Asia, um, even more so than anywhere else in the world, just because the mountain ranges, the Himalayas are so large. Um, but what that really says is that there's a huge need for electrical energy, particularly in the north part of South America. The crazy part about this is that the population is kind of converging. Um, they've almost stopped at the edge of the jungle uh, in the last thousand years. They haven't gone super, super deep, but actually they've gone quite deep from the Brazilian side, right? So when you think about the, the movement, um, it's actually coming up here from, if you look at the details, you'll see Brasilia is actually very much responsible, um, which is the capital of Brazil uh, for the deforestation. But this is very interesting because it kind of shows different perspectives about how the earth works, not only from population, but from an electrical energy perspective. So definitely take a look at this electrical energy thing. You'll probably be very surprised uh, when you draw your own circles and diagrams on here. Hopefully it will be very different than mine. Um, I try to draw pretty vast ones here um, just to kind of look at the bigger picture. And you may want to compare um, what you would perceive this to be like to what other people may think about this uh, in terms of population. So it's a super important topic uh, and we're gonna try to get into the details. I don't know if I'm gonna diagram everything out on camera right now, right yet. If we got some questions, um, I'm gonna maybe try to take some of those um, and it looks like we got a bunch of people. Uh, it looks like someone um, from Asia and Pakistan I see and then some of my friends here in the United States, Chicago, Texas, and a bunch of other places are trying to take a look at what's going on right now. Um, but so from that perspective, just seeing who's online and potentially listening right now, I would say there's super interesting things going on in India and Pakistan, right? It's no joke. There's a huge amount of population um, and also Bangladesh in this area. So you have to kind of separate it up into three different countries. There's India and then there's even Nepal and Bhutan. Um, so uh, that's kind of an interesting area because it's just so densely populated in the north and that's all due to farming. So if you look at this map here, um, it shows population, but it's really high density farming. And I was actually quite surprised. You can do street view and you'll be surprised. There's actually quite a number of lots. Uh, in the United States, you might drive for a few miles um, and you'll see one continuous farmland. But here it's like a few blocks um, or sometimes mile, a mile. It could be maybe a kilometer or something it would be one farm, but it's usually a short walking distance is a typical farm right now um, in India. And I wish I could show you that on a street view, but I was actually looking at Pakistan, Northern Pakistan and Punjab, which is right in here. And this is actually some of the most important farmland on the planet. So we're really talking about population, but why are we talking about farming? Again, that's one of the secrets here in this whole conversation is that if you don't have food, you don't have life. So, and you also need water. So that's why this is a water map as well showing some of these regions. Um, and it's important to kind of graph the population onto um, the maps here. Now, I'm gonna zoom in. Before we get too detailed, we're gonna zoom in and take a look at some of these maps. Um, so this is the FAO map, <clears throat> United Nations map. You'll see down here it says FAO. If you're curious where this map is coming from, <clears throat> same here. FAO, and this also includes some of the bathymetric imagery. Um, and you can really zoom in into the details here. Um, and the Earth at night, <clears throat> we can also do the details here. I'm gonna zoom around. And this is a downloadable copy, so they don't give you full access to the extreme details, but you'll see here in Europe, that's pretty detailed imagery, and you can start to see how there's some weird shapes going on. Uh, so if you're trying to get around Europe, I almost wish I used the population map. I just didn't have it available when I traveled in Europe. Um, but nowadays I would have probably just follow the population centers to kind of get me the best picture um, for what's going on in Europe. And actually this means Switzerland and some of these central areas are pretty important heading out to uh, the edge here, France and Monaco. 
Um, so actually the most wealthy place in all of Europe is probably Monaco right out in here um, and also off the coast of Italy and stuff. So, um, but um, super detailed map um, if you zoom in and we're gonna get even more detailed on the live copy. So for some reason you can't download um, that. Um, and then this one's also pretty detailed. I'm gonna go into India really quick. So this one's pretty detailed. Um, however, I really like this one. So if you're gonna get into the details of Asia, you probably want to use this map. Um, for some reason, it's just so beautiful, beautifully done, but it doesn't really show um, the significance for some reason of the population. So I really want to start it with the other map because it shows significance. But if you're going to look at the details, you may want to come in here and diagram this out to kind of see. So this will give you some different pictures. So if you're thinking about Beijing, China, you'll see some other cities and kind of how that's related. So if you're working, I've been starting to make a lot of friends in China actually, particularly in Asia, Philippines, and Indonesia. Let's go down there um, to look at Manila because I was just talking with someone last night uh, from Manila and they were actually looking for some work um, and we were just discussing what it's like to work in Manila. Uh, but you can see huge amounts of land just north of Manila here. And this is all like farmland, right? So when you go in <clears throat> to the other map, um, you'll see this is the farmland map. Um, we can zoom in to Southeast Asia and you'll start to see, it takes a long time to load because <clears throat> this is just such huge amounts <laughs> of information. So, <clears throat> and I think I got the wrong map underneath. Let me put this one here. That might load a little bit faster. So here you can start to see <clears throat> basically the population and the farmland, right? So this red stuff, shows all this new farmland and population is kind of in blue. Um, so <clears throat> I try to add the cities too here. You may want to turn off the cities just because it kind of gets in the way place labels when you zoom in on these maps. So, uh, but if you're not familiar with the cities, it helps to add them when you first start doing some of this mapping and population perspectives. But wow, this will really start to tell us a lot. Um, and the picture that we need to paint starts, believe it or not, where the main areas are. So <clears throat> you can see there's some rivers on that map as well. So really, we need to understand what's happened over the past many thousands of years. That's what the discussion is right now, right? So we're going to be able to see deep into the past and into the future um, by understanding where these population centers are, right? So this is really what's changing Earth is India right now, right? So it's no joke. Um, that India, because it's not really, it's, it's actually three countries, right? We have Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh, and we don't see this anywhere else on the planet. So we really want to look very heavily. So I saw my friend, um, I see another friend in Africa, and the growth rates also in Africa, particularly in West Africa, are starting to become really important, right? So it's, it's actually, you'd say the same amount of people are in Africa as are in Europe right now. So... And that's happened just in the last 100 years or even decades, so 10 years or so. So things have really changed, and you're also starting to see changes in South America. So that's why I like this map so much, and I wish we could get it detailed on the other diagrams. I'm going to pause this again um, and let some people catch up on the discussion here. Um, I see some people involved in tourism potentially watching this, um, and some other people who uh, have businesses um, that try to think about tourism. And this is a very important topic because um, the price of something actually goes down when you have more people sometimes in certain situations. And then in other situations, more people can actually make the price go up. So it's a really interesting uh, problem uh, depending on if you're on the supply or demand side. Uh, for example, if you're flying somewhere, the supply, if there's a lot of flights there, um, that can lower the cost, but the food cost can go up a little bit sometimes when there's just such a high demand. So um, there's some interesting things to think about um, as you check out around the world. Sometimes you might want to check out a big city, you know, New York City, Hong Kong, Shanghai, for instance, Amsterdam up in here, um, or Lagos, Nigeria. Um, but then the passports can be different too because sometimes with high population zones, it can actually be very dangerous. Um, and I would actually look at uh, the water supply and food supply. So 
before you think about traveling, I see a friend of mine involved in tourism and a uh, new friend, I guess. And then, but basically, there's a lot of things to think about uh, when you're trying to think about traveling around the world. Um, but certainly it helps you to understand where the population is. So if you're trying to really understand the planet, um, it may help to look at that map. Um, and then one thing we didn't discuss at all um, is this map. This is a wildlife map, right? So this is a, we looked at the population for humanity, but this is the population for the wildlife. And wow, look at the Amazon, right? And look at Brazil too, the front part of Brazil. Um, there's a lot of animals right here in Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. So I highly recommend checking out Rio de Janeiro before you check out anything in Africa. Um, there's actually a good mix of people. Um, it's almost half black and half white in South America. But um, wow, does this map really change, especially when we look at the fish too. It doesn't even show the ocean. So the Caribbean, Puerto Rico is an excellent example of a very low cost place to travel to um, that has a lot of biodiversity because of the ocean. But as you travel to some of these places, you need to take a step up. You Like for example, for me, I've tried to do for a whole year, uh, had zero environmental waste. So that means no plastic waste. Um, you know, going to the grocery store, bringing all my own bags, you know, not being able to buy like things like milk because it comes in a plastic container, having to buy milk comes in a glass, recyclable container. I'm also vegetarian. I try to be vegan sometimes, but it takes a lot of planning to go to some of these places like Southeast Asia uh, and some other places. So before you go there, you may want to get yourself up to date on environmental pollution it can actually save your life, right? If someone sees you throwing trash on the ground, they may jump you or attack you or do something bad to you. So you have to be cautious, particularly in Southeast Asia and also in the Caribbean, Cuba. But if you come in as a very environmentally friendly person, you may have a better chance to, your safety may be a lot wiser. You may not be around certain people if they're drinking lots of alcohol and wasting cans of beer with aluminum or um, other things you can just start to notice who's actually making a huge impact on the planet. So again, this map, we're not going to really look at this map in the discussion, but I highly recommend this one. I did add it in the link and you can zoom in and diagram that out. I'm going to look at Europe really quick with this map just so you can see the beauty <clears throat> of what's going on in Europe. Um, and I was really surprised. There's several European maps. And like I said, um, we want to look at... Uh, different types of these maps, right? So let me just zoom in on this one here and you can see the difference. So uh, it's just it's just really helpful to look at two different maps. So let's look at this one and then zoom out. So it's just a little bit easier to see on this map. That's why we're gonna try to use this map for the discussion today. But if you're really getting into the details and diagramming things out, it really helps to use this one. So um, for example, if you go in here to Paris, which is such a megapolis now, and uh, it's kind of scary. When I visited Paris, you can't see, it just, you, you go up into the Eiffel Tower and you can't see anything except for houses and houses for just ever. So it's really scary. Um, it's a, kind of a different experience because I've been, I grew up in Chicago and, you know, we went up into large buildings in Chicago, but because Chicago it's very similar to Chicago, but it's just different because there's actually part of the town that's like uh, modern. So they have skyscrapers in one part of the town and then just old houses, you know, thousand year old houses, hundreds of years old, um, you know, bricks. And on one direction in Paris and the other direction has like modern skyscrapers. So kind of a weird thing um, that's going on. Uh, and then India, obviously, should be a very primary source of the discussion. I think we're actually going to diagram out India first and China because that's the most important in terms of population. So as we take a step back, I'm going to take a break here for a moment because there's just so much information uh, that we got to do. Uh, but we're going to zoom in here in India here, and we're going to see what's going on specifically in India and China. And there's actually a map, it's actually hard to do, but the 3D map actually gives us a little more surface area 
So we're going to change that to a 3D map. And I'm sorry that's loading so slowly. 3D terrain map. And we may even have to do this a little bit differently. So, and again, this is the NASA Worldview Earth at Night. So it's an, it told, they have a 3D version of this on Google Earth. Um, but wow, can you see details on this map in terms of population, right? So Earth at Night really tells you even on the ocean you can see the fishing vessels with all the lights um, and it's just unbelievable amount of fishing but anyway I get a little bit off on this discussion so here is actually it looks more detailed on the downloadable version that's interesting just more clear uh, image but uh, anyway there's this one as well so we're gonna try to this is the one that we're gonna actually in a diagram so we're gonna actually probably get into the details here um, and some of the things that we're looking for in the population thing is like, what really is China, right? Like, so as you head out to China, this is kind of like, there's going to be roads that you see, but like, how does this mean? What does it mean to go from Beijing? A lot of people, when they travel from city to city, you might say, oh, I have a relative living here and they may just travel directly there or fly there. Um, but what does it mean like culturally to have this kind of pathway here, kind of like a sliver pathway through here? We're gonna look at all that in a moment, um, and I'm gonna put this on pause, um, and then we're gonna zoom in on this one as well, just in case we need it. Um, and this is nice because it shows all the little cities um, there as well, and maybe even look at the importance of this. So it's just super important because I'm gonna zoom in at 300%, um, and hopefully this will be. So this wildlife, image really shows us the importance of the mountains. So Laos, um, Thailand, uh, Myanmar, um, and then just the, the, the coastal areas. So there's a lot of wildlife concerns um, back there as well as China kind of has this weird area over here that actually does have quite a lot of wildlife. And that's actually the most, one of the most uh, important regions uh, for wildlife in Asia. So um, because you combine it with population. So this is still loading. So um, but as you can see, you kind of get a better image on the 3D map of everything. If you hold the control key down, you can even see even more. So we're going to try to get a zoomed in picture. And I might even grab this, this one directly because this has farmland on it as well. So, um, and I think this is a 3D map here. So now I can pull it out. So it's really hard to see. Um, but the, the problem is you can't just get it all on one map. So um, even on a 3D surface, it starts to wipe out what's going on in Pakistan here, as well as in Beijing, right? There's at Shanghai, so there's no joke with the amount of population there. Um, but, um, but wow, look at Bangladesh here on this image. Um, anyway, I'm going to be back in a little bit. Take a look at this image. Um, there's just so much that we can do uh, to try to understand the planet. So again, no matter what you're doing for work, um, you know, in the United States, we have people from all over the world um, that we're trying to work with, um, and they come from you know India, China, Africa, Latin America, Europe, um, and we're basically going to figure out how this all works um, today. So this is pretty much one of the most detailed conversations on the entire internet. So uh, if you're prepared for this, uh, we're gonna go through the details. Uh, I might have to pause this a little bit just because it's such an extensive thing. I see my cousin is online here. I see a local real estate agent and a musician and some other people. Um, so uh, in terms of real estate, like if you're working in real estate, this is a huge factor. Um, you know, I was really shocked when I went to South America. You know, you could buy a condo for ten to twenty thousand dollars right on the beach. Um, and so really, if you're thinking about living somewhere else, um, this is the conversation for you because the population really matters. Um, the higher the population, the more likely you are to have an international airport. There's so many details that matter with population. So I'll be back in a little bit. Um, take a break. Try to walk around. Think about how important this conversation is. Once we get done with this conversation, you're going to understand the whole entire population for the planet. I've already done this several different ways over years i've kind of worked on this um so you're gonna have to kind of trust some of the things i said but honestly i want people to doubt some of these things and look at the earth in a totally new way um, so i kept this diagram first 
um, because I thought it was funny, I draw these huge circles just to make it obvious that my <laughs> suggestions are, need a lot of refinement. Um, and it's going to be really interesting to see what your ideas are for the planet. So you'll definitely learn more by actually trying to sit down and diagram this out yourself. So I recommend even cancel the video right now um, because I hate being online myself um, and just take a look at the details yourself. Um, I'll be storing this video on YouTube um, and a few other places so you can come back and watch it anytime. Uh, but the diagrams are going to be pretty important um, to help us understand everything. Thank you so much. I'll be right back. Okay, so <clears throat> hello everybody. I just saw one of my friends. A couple, actually, a couple of my friends and my uncle used to live down in the Caribbean, and he didn't even have a house. He lived on a boat, and um, it's really exciting. The thing about the future of housing and population, because. Um, Quite a lot of it, excuse me, is in the floodplain and even moving out onto the water. So uh, coastal cities are actually very important, but rural stuff, as the West Coast reminds you, is actually one of the main keys because you have to have food. Um, and we haven't completely outfished the ocean yet, but we're getting close to there. So... Anyway, what I wanted to remind everybody about my friend down the Caribbean and my uncle is definitely try to work with really fun people on understanding the population, right? So I've definitely gone through phases in my life where I'm like, oh my God, the earth is going to just go to hell and it's going to be overpopulated. Um, but then technology comes in, people start having less kids, um, different problems happen or different good things happen. Um, so... Life has different changes as you get older. Um, sometimes you might get younger. Some of your philosophies. But there's a lot to understand here. So we're going to try to grab some of these maps and diagram this out. I think what we're going to do is probably only diagram Asia and maybe Europe. Um, it's just such a huge task. Um, looking at the population. So, hmm. Let's think about this. How do we start to understand the population of the entire planet? Um, so, basically, that's what we've already done here is looked at this. So, the, the importance here is that there's different circles around different places. So, here I didn't even circle uh, Central uh, Caribbean, but super important and here I did kind of circle it but you can kind of see there's kind of some coastal areas here where it's basically in South America particularly Central America it's pretty much all on the coast where you don't really see that in Africa you kind of see it in Africa West Africa um, Europe um, but basically in South America it's all coastal property and people down there right um, and then the Caribbean is all coastal stuff too um, but uh, being, you know, 100 miles from the ocean is still quite a distance. Um, but down here in Java, it's definitely an island culture uh, as well as Japan. So anyway, so I'm kind of, um, so this is a huge task understanding everything. So let me zoom in um, and start with this map so you can see how detailed this is. So we're actually pretty detailed already on this map with understanding all this. So uh, I'm gonna actually start with China because I'm a little bit, I wanted to look at it at the complexities here. Uh, I've been talking with people in Asia and the reason China is so important is that the cultural difference, there's, there's most of the people look Asian and uh, almost Chinese um, but there's different types of Asians, so um, you know the facial features will be different depending on where you are. Um, the Philippines, or the nose will be different. The cheeks or different eyes will be different. Um, but China is a big key to everything here. So we're gonna try to diagram this out the best I can and show you some things that may surprise you. So. Uh, first of all, let's see if I got a, 
I think I my, my uh, I think I got a little bit messed up here trying to diagram this out. But uh, but wow, can you see this right away? Um, I actually did a little bit of research. This is called Dalin, China, and actually it's very close to North Korea. Uh, and you can see there's kind of another population sliver out that way. And wow, does this change, right? So you almost have this heading up into Mongolia and then a gap um, between these two areas. So this is separate. Um, this is actually part of Lake Bakal in Russia. So there's almost a, almost a tribe of people out there. Um, let's see if I can, does that change this? No, it doesn't. Um, give me one second. Okay, so I just want to remind everybody that, again, this is a huge task um, to do. Uh, now, what we wanted to do is kind of see, now this is Beijing here. Um, whoa, that's interesting. Doesn't really, sorry about that. A little bit new to the uh, uh, free tool here. This is called GIMP. Um, if you want, it's a great tool to kind of help uh, work on imaging for free. It's on Linux. Um, so basically, what we're trying to work on here is this weird stuff, right? So there's um, basically, this is kind of heading out into Beijing, uh, but there's a whole other pathway that kind of goes through here, right? Not to mention all these. So this is very important to know about. Um, basically, this is South Shanghai. So, um, Many of the new larger companies and actual people are starting to live on the south side. Um, some of that is because people want to live down in Hong Kong, um, and it's just too expensive to live in Hong Kong. So they travel all the way along the coast here. Um, and you can see I drew that purple line off off the edge here just because I wanted it to be um, very obvious to see what's going on. Now, Taiwan gets very expensive as well. So originally... It was probably cheaper to live in Guangzhou and Shenzhen. Um, but today, things have really changed. Um, so basically, Hong Kong, um, Taiwan use, is now very expensive, and so is Hong Kong. Um, but a lot of that springs off of Shanghai here. Um, but really, the main population center is even north of there. So I'm going to put this in red. Maybe that'll be a brighter color, but not really. Uh, so... Um, that kind of tells us a lot about what's happening here. Now, I was really surprised uh, to do some street view uh, down in southern China. Um, particularly, there isn't really anything available on Google, so you have to use Baidu. Um, so anything you want to try to understand about China really has to be done through Baidu. Um, but you can see um, that there's almost two communities here. And it doesn't really even show you on the aquifer map. There's something really interesting going on because the population has actually shifted to the north and the east side. Right? There's this population all the way up along the coast with very many thousands and thousands of beautiful islands. Just super awesome. It's one of the coolest places to live on the planet um, is right here in China. So, um, But as you get further and further south, um, you get down to Haolong Bay. Um, there's also thousands and thousands of islands um, just going on as far as you can see out in the ocean. You should definitely look at some of the images from these areas. So um, basically what happened is that this all changed in Vietnam, right? So you can see the huge amount of population in Ho Chi Minh City. It's almost the most dense, dense. It's, it's like Hong Kong, right? Or even Shanghai. Uh, and Beijing is up here, right? So Beijing is actually not that populated compared to Shanghai. Uh, but when you look at Beijing, it's actually all farmland, right? So the reason they control the entire country is basically because of farmland. And you can see it also doesn't really point there. It kind of points to here and even goes out into Korea and Seoul, Korea, right? And then you got North Korea up there. Um, and then look at what happens here. You can start to see how this relates uh, to passing over to essentially Japan and Osaka and Tokyo, right? So you can see it's all through these island chains. Um, and this is very beautiful, but it's actually more hilly to some extent in Japan than it is along the coast here. Um, so this actually reminds me a little bit more of California, uh, but for some reason it actually gets quite cold in Japan. 
So it's someone asked me just yesterday, I was talking with a guy last night actually from Japan, um, and he was kind of telling me about uh, Japan. He was really proud to um, say a lot of things about Japan. Um, he also did talk about the war um, with Russia um, and that basically no one has ever... Uh, Japan is very strong, uh, right? Because they make a lot of automobiles. They're very big in robotics and some other things. But basically, as you head around here, you're starting to see it's not such a direct path, right? So like if we looked at the flight map, you'd see all the flights basically between the major cities, um, but that's not how the world works at all in terms of the population, right, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and there's actually a very interesting area right in here, I would say, kind of a gray area where you kind of have some static way to get to Hong Kong. So it's not really a direct path except for maybe right through here, right? So you'd have to look through Guangzhou. Um, and then the Pearl River, the interesting thing is that if you study the Pearl River, it actually heads out this way. Uh, and then the Yangtze River, this is actually along the Yangtze River, but the Pearl River kind of stops over here. And it may be part, uh, this may be uh, part of Kuming um, area. Um, and basically this all heads back even deeper. So that's probably all from the Yangtze River as well. Um, and then here, um, as you head further down the coast, you'll see it's really heavily populated, kind of like what we saw in South America. There's some new, really cool hip cities uh, showing up. I used to work in Silicon Valley with this guy from Vietnam, and he was one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. Um, anyway, give me one second here. Okay, so, um, so much to talk about here. Um, there's a assessor. I just moved into this, like, Pretty much abandoned house and the assessor just stopped over we made a couple changes to the place so um anyway uh so where are we so we're basically talking about some interesting things so interesting thing is that um what we see is that high density is basically the same population in china as there is in india but yet india is kind of focused more on farming perhaps um and it's actually not really including Bangladesh or Pakistan as we got to. But Thailand is such a huge tourist destination as well as the Philippines and Indonesia. So you start to get in these tourist destination countries as you get further south. Um, and I think I've diagrammed this out pretty well before. Um, so many other diagrams that I've worked on. Um, but you can kind of see there's some weird stuff going on here, right? And then even through Ho Chi Minh City, you get into, you kind of go from Vietnam out to uh, Cambodia and then up through Laos. And then it kind of joins in here and there's even a separate pathway here, right? So you could just go in and just diagram everything like crazy. Um, but it's probably best um, to save that for a separate discussion. So, um, and we're not really gonna look at Southeast Asia and Oceania, but you can see the Philippines uh, being heavily populated there. Um, and the question about Sri Lanka is very important because of the wildlife, right? So there's actually some white regions here um, on this where we don't see any of that uh, in India at all, maybe parts of Pakistan, Afghanistan, and then heading out to Iran. So that becomes desert and you basically not livable out there. Um, so the assessor would probably say something different um, with that kind of stuff. So, um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, as you'll see, um, there is quite a difference there. Um, so we basically looked at this. Now, India, um, like I said, um, is a little bit, you know, you kind of got to look at <clears throat> Pakistan and Bangladesh uh, and then Sri Lanka as like a final case. Um, but wow, um, do you see kind of this whole traffic between Mumbai and Chennai, right? So this kind of heads, this is Mumbai right there. Uh, and then a separate kind of zone, uh, you have Bangalore, uh, which is becoming kind of a hotspot um, for <clears throat> the tech industry. Um, and then basically kind of a, almost two pathways, right? You have this heading up to New Delhi, um, and then even a third pathway 
and even a fourth pathway, <coughs> right? Um, and then Calcutta and then some other oceanfront stuff going on over here, uh, which looks pretty interesting. Now, I really wanted to say, like, looking at the west coast of the United States, uh, if you remember when we looked at that, there's almost nobody out here, right? Um, so, and yet California, everyone has heard of California around the world, Silicon Valley and whatnot. So it is no joke that these population areas in here would be extremely important. I mean, it's almost more important than California, uh, what's going on over here, right? So, um, and this shows some very interesting stuff going on. So what I would say is that, you know, we were involved in this Afghanistan war, um, and also Russia is starting to become a major uh, factor. Um, but you can see that basically China, this is the far, it's almost like China totally changes, right? Once you get to Tibet, um, it's just too hard to be a part of almost the same country. But I totally support the one policy, one China um, concept because it's really terrible to have to have passports and it's really nice to just be able to go between land area and land area, but uh, there's so many different countries here. So what you see here is this area from Afghanistan. So I think a lot of people didn't understand <clears throat> that basically China probably should have been involved in that as well as Russia, not even the United States uh, at all, right? So you see these weird <clears throat> kind of pathways um, and then this all being into Iran, right? So definitely Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan um, being a part. But really the solution to all this uh, has to do with Russia opening up their borders more uh, to tourists, right? Particularly all the way out to Lake Bacall, right? So this is, it's almost like this region right here um, and then right in here. So it's almost like these people up in here. I mean, it, it's basically, this is a very big tourist area um, and there's a couple of different countries, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, all these, Afghanistan, uh, different countries in this region um, that basically is more important than even California um, in terms of population. So, um, and this is definitely part of the refugee crisis. Um, and Iran doesn't have the complexity, right? It, it just can't, they're not all fitting within the borders here. And I think a lot of people uh, from Iran used to go to Afghanistan at one time in history, um, and really this city right in here, these cities here are vital to understanding how they think, um, not only in Iran, uh, but Afghanistan um, and this whole Middle East. Um, and then you can see Dubai, so a lot of the energy, if you look at the flight maps, um, the world's flight maps, <clears throat> like how are people getting around the entire planet? Well, they go get the oil from the Middle East. Um, so it's really is a really important conversation how the population works here. And you can see Dubai, Qatar, um, Bahrain, um, Kuwait, um, and the population picture becomes very, uh, I mean, it's, it's actually very beautiful. The, the climate is a lot like, if you looked at pictures of Iran, it's a lot like California. So um, basically this whole Middle East is. So you can kind of see you have this kind of pathway heading out from this ocean side to ocean side. So basically Beirut, Lebanon, um, and then all that uh, current problems that we're starting to see in the Middle East uh, with Israel and Palestine <clears throat> um, is just dwarfed by the population that you see here <clears throat> in Egypt, right? And there's even, uh, you know, S Saudi Arabia, um, Riyadh <clears throat> and Jeddah out here <clears throat> that become super important. So these are just kind of just weird population centers. My aunt actually lived out here in Oman um, <clears throat> and not to mention the huge population converging, right? As you get kind of over to here, this all heads into Ethiopia, right? <clears throat> and you see kind of a pathway here and then a splintering <clears throat> into Africa, right? So, um, and remember, we all started this conversation all the way back in China, right? And so basically, it's it's coastal, right? It, and it's also inland. But because of the mountain ranges, it's so hard to get. It's just not possible. Population does kind of work through here, um, get into Tibet, Mount Everest, 
that region. Uh, but really what happened is it was a fishing thing and they kind of went along the coast here. And it really emphasizes how important Singapore is. Kuala Lumpur, this city here, and kind of coming up through this region as well as you get to Yangon, Myanmar, right? And then you hit uh, Bangladesh here. So, um, and then this, you know, this becomes very, um, you know, Pakistan is almost helping out prevent people from getting further into the desert, right? It's like your last point um, prior, unless you really know what you're doing, unless you're really trying to get out into some of these weird lakes. Uh, and some of these, the aerial sea is already dried up, so the map is actually quite different um, than what we see here. But again, we're starting to get into Africa. So let's just zoom out because a lot of people are maybe really confused about what we've looked at here. So we've basically gone from the most, we're looking at most of the world's population. We've just kind of done that uh, with the exception of down here in Jakarta and the Philippines. We didn't really diagram that out super carefully, but we probably, you can just see uh, Java Island being huge and I just did a discussion on Bali um, the other day but <clears throat> anyway so let's jump into Africa and South America and Europe and then leave the United States as a separate topic um, but wow can you see this pathway this is one of the largest longest you have the Ural Mountains and that's basically what separates um, Europe um, and this whole other Far East. So you have this whole, you know, the Siberian Railway, essentially, that goes, it's one of the longest railways in the world, connecting a huge, vast expanse um, across here. And it just becomes almost nobody lives out there, right? So you can see Lake Bacall kind of being a very mysterious uh, point. Um, and then, you know, the climate, I think it's very cold up there, so it's hard to see this on the map. So... Uh, let's do Europe or who's let's, who's all watching this right now. So yeah, there's just so much uh, to look at. And again, I want to remind everybody that this information that we're looking at right now will probably be valuable for the next few decades or hundreds of years. So super important uh, to get this all down and understand. Okay, so I'm pretty excited to do Africa because this is kind of a new understanding uh, even for me. Um, so how did this happen, right? So actually, uh, the population from the, essentially the whiter population has come down through Ethiopia uh, and the Nile River, right? So it's actually weird because you had the Nile River kind of going through here. Um, and But actually what's going on is it's actually uh, the Muslim population, right? Um, and Muslim population is very different than the Christian population, and the Hindu population. So that really changes most of North Africa. And you can see there's definitely a continuous area from Morocco, Algeria, um, and then kind of looking through the uh, Strait of Gibraltar. Um, and then also here, um, but it kind of stops um, almost in uh, Libya, uh, you can see. And there's a couple desert populations out here that look pretty interesting as well. Um, but wow, um, the coolest part that we already mentioned is kind of this shape that we start to see across Africa, right? And it's weird because look at this, right? You can see, um, I didn't really notice this before, but it's actually a southward path. Um, and the river, the river will actually flow this way through the Congo. Um, so it's a little bit weird because this stuff is all happening through Abuja, right? So you have kind of an inroad. Um, they moved the capital outside of Lagos. Lagos is actually over here. Um, so the weird thing about the population is that the mega cities with the big skyscrapers are over here, but the population is actually on the delta here. And this is near Cameroon. Um, and I wish I could just zoom in and get into the details here more, but. Uh, Cameroon is one of the most vital countries in the world because it's essentially protecting this population spillover uh, into the Congo. So it's pretty white in here, and that's partly due to Cameroon, uh, Cameroon's effect um, on the Congo jungle. And here we have uh, Angola, uh, which is Portuguese speaking, and you can see the population just drops out dramatically in the desert here, just like it does in the desert in the northern side. Um, but 
this just takes so much complexity here. Um, you really have to understand how the United Nations works and the refugee uh, areas. It's basically centered around Kampala, Uganda, um, not even really in West Africa. Um, there are some places that the United Nations operates, but uh, basically what happens is that you can see um, this is all the way out to Kenya and Zanzibar, right? So you kind of have this pathway where people are trying to get into the jungle that way, and then they're also going kind of like through this way, um, and it's almost through the water pathway, right? So they don't really take, there's an inner side to this, an outer side, and then Rwanda basically, and this is good news because it's actually heading towards the south. The bad news is actually the people on the Kenya and the Uganda side going north, as well as people here, right? So this is a pretty safe pathway outside the jungle to and from. And I looked at a refugee highway map uh, fairly recently on this whole topic, uh, but you can see there's also another pathway here. Uh, this is heading down to Kampala, Uganda. And, and that basically, some of that does result into heavy population into the Congo jungle. And the problem with this is that it's not that it's bad that it's on the edge. It's that the source of the river is all right in here. And I should put that in blue. Um, I'm going to put this the only, this is like really vital to understand is that this whole area is where the, the Congo River starts. So the cleanest water needs to be in here. So all the clean water needs to be on this side. And they're kind of avoiding the jungle uh, because it's either too swampy uh, and there's actually a city right in here you can see uh, there right so uh, but um, but wow is it complicated right so and you can see it's just not a direct path going into here uh, and then this is getting down to Mozambique Maputo and uh, Tanzania right so huge population along the south part of this uh and this these guys are probably the keys to uh as well i mean definitely rwanda is but in terms of the uh safaris like tanzania is basically in charge of the world's safaris and this population on the south side really matters a lot because there's these weird lakes uh that you don't see anywhere else that are really vital to protect and i would say that all starts here. So there's basically a part that people aren't really talking about <clears throat> in terms of the safari land, which is in here. Uh, most people fly into uh, like Zanzibar and uh, Kenya. And so there's a lot of tourism <clears throat> for like to see an elephant for the first time in your life or a giraffe and all that. And the animals, if you watched some of the videos, about what's going on in East Africa, you'll see the animals are like, uh, will attack the uh, people on, on the tourist bus. So you, you actually have to be careful. Like they'll actually um, like, like kill people on the safaris. Um, there's some weird stuff with elephants even, right? They're, they're like, I don't know if you've seen those bull riding videos where people get trampled, but it's almost as bad as a bull riding video where someone gets trampled um but um but wow um does uh <laughs> does south africa really kind of change everything and i almost put it on a separate piece down here right so it's it's kind of this weird tip uh, and johannesburg and durban and all that uh kind of being hugely important so if you look at this map here um it really shows that this electrical stuff was really very vital to actually West Africa, right? It looks like if you kind of draw the line here, yes, it's part of South Africa and primarily East Africa, but I just wanted to emphasize kind of that importance there. Um, and yes, there's also this going on through there, but that's why I kind of drew that one in particular that way. So, uh, and and look at look at this, right? So you have this weird oceanfront city but wow is the population really heavy out into here and this is because of farming right so what you look on the farmland maps there's actually quite a lot of farming going on 
this makes it look like this is almost a separate region for farming. And then you have this whole East African thing going on. Um, and what the problem is, is that as you get further towards this area, you get into desert. And so it's just not populated. And basically the farmland needs to shift perhaps further south um, out of those safari regions, right? So when you're talking about the equator, that's all should be wildlife, right? So you're basically, um, I mean, the equator's right through here, right? So basically, and it's 23 degrees on either side, so it's really quite extensive. And you have to kind of be right on this edge here to do that farmland. You can see the farmland is primarily off of that equator section, um, but it's important to see <clears throat> how that all works. So uh, Madagascar being a super important place too. So this should be looked at in very big detail um, because it's an island. It's kind of like Japan of Africa so um, or Taiwan of China. And so uh, super interesting to think about there. So we didn't even get into West Africa, um, but you know, the part that's hard to understand about West Africa is that this is all should be forested. Um, there's kind of different climates and there's a separate climate zone right in here. There's a, you see that massive lake. Um, so the wildlife really, this shouldn't be populated. Um, so what is helping is this kind of stuff going off through there. Um, and then as you get into this region, you start to talk about stuff uh, that even goes into the Congo, right? Because you see this population kind of comes through here and there's a weird kind of road through there. Now, I have diagrammed this out very carefully uh, before on a main map. And let me show you that. Uh, I wish I could grab that map, but we're gonna go over to Africa really quick and show you how detailed this is on this map. So you may wanna use the forestry map as well. So you can start to see this shape forming how it gets into the Congo jungle and then eventually these cities here and then there starts to light up the entire jungle and then wow look at the back door so this is what we were talking about before where the population is actually going down south to Kinshasa um, but it's very important because the rivers aren't shown on that map um, let me see if we got a river map here that we can see um, so Africa is desperate for clean water in the jungle and look at that population as it starts to light up so you can see some of the details and this is pretty helpful to see but the for this is the population footprint but when you combine that with the forestry and farming footprint you start to see a whole different picture but wow is this right in here super clean water is necessary and Rwanda needs to take charge of that for the rest of the whole entire Congo because if you pollute it here which they're essentially living right on the water um, it's even a little speck of dirt or pollution can hurt an animal, right? It can hurt you if you're doing that. So anyway, I see some real estate people and some different people online here, as well as some people that are involved in government related stuff and some artists and some other people. Um, and so, uh, so where are we? We're over here in Africa, right? So here's the farmland map and you can start to see how that population is in blue here, as well as the aquifers, right? And I almost need to add the river map on top of that. Um, and I just not, we're not looking at the river map here. So, um, and then you can see, it's just, it's not necessarily poverty, but they've actually done a fairly good job of not electrifying the entire jungle here. Um, but there are some spots right in here that need to be thought about carefully um, because that's a lot of electricity. Uh, coming in on the jungle and you can see there's actually coming in through this back door area and this is where that population here uh, needs to be responsible uh, as they start to electrify the south part of the jungle this needs to be very water centric and they need to start cleaning up and you can actually see one of these lakes is almost entirely green and you can't really even see it uh, from a satellite view uh, but wow does that kind of tell us Johannesburg down here is super important uh, if you're not familiar with Johannesburg. Um, but um, so let's let's zoom back out before we get completely lost on the whole population. So we've almost gone through everything 
Um, I want to get to South America and Europe, and this is becoming a hugely long conversation. Um, but again, this is a once in a lifetime thing, uh, hopefully for you and for me, uh, looking at all these details, this is probably not going to change anytime soon. So Europe, what I really wish I would have done, um, and I almost did this, um, I, I wanted to travel out to Greece, but I just, it's so hard to get there. So partly what I did in Europe was primarily just checked out this area. So it was pretty wise because you could take the Eurail through here um, and you can see Milan and Venice and some other areas. Uh, it is hard to get down to Rome <clears throat> and then kind of come back up through here. So uh, it's important to understand the train system and I have a train system map if you'd like to see, but definitely the details here are important, right? So out of Paris um, and then all this stuff going on here and there's actually psychology of Europe is super important. I read some studies showing depression maps. So you may wanna look at the depression maps in Europe because they're actually getting quite old there. They're all watching videos online um, and it's not what you think in Europe. Uh, the major cities uh, have a lot of younger population in them, but in, in the rural areas, it's actually getting to be 40 years old or older, um, and it's becoming hard. Um, so you can actually get some work uh, helping elderly all throughout Europe, um, but you can kind of see these, these roadways heading out here, and particularly all the way out to Ukraine, right? So you can see... Um, that this was kind of an interesting area um, for Russia and Moscow, right? It wasn't a direct route down to Ukraine at all. Um, and this is actually part of Russia, and you can see through here. So this is basically far eastern Europe, and like, like we said, uh, California is important, and really the population of California um, is dwarfed by what's going on in Europe, right? So... Um, you really have huge amounts of people. Uh, we don't see this anywhere <clears throat> uh, on the West Coast. I mean, you see Los Angeles, but really it's all from Amsterdam here uh, and not even really London, right? So you see uh, some interesting stuff kind of happening here. And then as you head out to Dublin um, and then even out to Iceland, right, out here. But... Uh, but yeah, it's just so densely kind of organized population, maybe you would say, um, but uh, in the rural areas, um, but as you get into the cities, you can start to see uh, Germany is actually uh, kind of more of a gateway place to the far Eastern Europe um, and Moscow, right? So you kind of see out to there as well as another pathway kind of coming through there. Um, and I was just so shocked to see the population out here in Norway. My brother's been out there. Um, I would love to go to Norway someday to see, play some chess up there or something. But uh, but the work situation is really interesting here because it's all along the coast, like we see in South America. Um, and it gets very cold. Otherwise, um, it's very cold everywhere. Uh, but being closer to the water makes the temperature of the land be approximately what the water is. And if the water doesn't freeze, then it stays warmer um, in general. So that's why people are primarily near the waterfront there. So uh, anyway, so let's go down over here to South America um, and Central America. Um, but you can just see Mexico being hugely important. It's perhaps more important than all of California. So you look at the population in Central America it's no joke. So, I mean, I don't know why people would even want to live in California. So, I've been through the Central Valley of California. It's really boring. It's all McDonald's, Burger King, Arby's. It's terrible. Um, but in Central America, not the case at all, <clears throat> necessarily. There are McDonald's is there and things like that. I'm not against necessarily. But uh, I don't want to say good things or bad things right now about this. But... Uh, so yeah, so basically we're almost done with the entire planet, right? So basically look at this, like Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and then heading down to Panama, right? So you basically have this weird stuff, which is primarily, interestingly, along the West Coast, right? And that's because it's really beautiful 
It's a lot like California, basically. It's almost even better. So it's probably better to live down here. I don't know why a lot of people are coming up north. Um, but the beauty of the environment and everything is awesome there, as well as all in these oceans. So I think it's kind of weird that, uh, and perhaps that's a lot due to farmland, right? So when you looked at the farmland map, the wealth of the United States is kind of shifting up to Canada um, and the Midwest. We have the food, um, and we're starting to have even more population. So um, it's just something to think about as you map this all out. And Colombia being a huge central point, as well as Venezuela, Caracas, and then even heading out here to uh, Trinidad and Tobago, really being the start for all this windward islands. I have a couple new friends out there that I've been trying to work with. Um, and you can see here, it kind of going up into uh, Bolivia, um, and Bolivia being a very kind of opposite side of the population chain here, and then heading out into Paraguay and being kind of interesting to Argentina. So, and then really, this is all this is uh, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, and then wow, is this stuff important in Brazil? And that's a big farming chunk. I would say this is farming central for Brazil, and they just are not. You know, Argentina is doing all beef primarily um, and cattle farming. Uh, and then they're starting to do like regular crops in Brazil. So you can see <clears throat> and up into Paraguay. Uh, but still, they can cut down a lot on the farmland. Um, and there's definitely some stuff that I've looked at in detail over here through um, this area. Uh, and this is kind of scary because you can kind of see through Belém and then the whole coast front being huge all the way down to Sao Paulo. Um, and really not to mention uh, the uh, capital of Brazil here um, kind of being a gateway. So this stuff kind of going deep into the jungle because this is still part of Brazil. And yeah, this is the capital. Like, why aren't they really thinking about this? And there's some separations here that you can see <coughs> kind of coming in. Uh, but anyway, so that's a lot of information. Um, we just about did everything. I mean, we did do everything. I have all the maps and the details here um, for you to take a look at. So definitely go back and try to do it. We did it on this map, but man, does it matter to do this on different maps, right? You just see different shapes, different colors, um, whether it's population. It's not even certain. You know, some of these come from different years, um, and it's hard to get an exact population map. Um, so this is really first time in history. We don't have an exact population map, but we have a pretty precise view because we have all this satellite imagery. We know where we're deforesting. We know all the details about Earth at night. Um, and then definitely take a look at that one. Um, you can see it looks just slightly different um, on this Earth at night map. So there's little diagrams that you can do. I definitely say take a look at the Earth at night map. Uh, if you wanted to go further into the details here. Um, and I'm not going to upload these images because I would like to have people work on their own stuff. Um, but you have basically the main stuff if you'd like to look at some of these main regions. Uh, but I'd be glad to talk with you about it. Um, there's so much to look at. It looks like we got people, I mean, I got old friends that I've had for decades um, and just different people looking at what's going on. I see someone from Puerto Rico. Um, and I see a lawyer here and a bunch of other people, but no matter what you're trying to do, um, there's so much to know about the planet. Um, we just understood a huge part. This is not a part of history um, that's in the news. It's stuff that you really have to look at carefully on the map. Um, and wow, was that important in Asia, these kind of bridges in the north, in Russia, uh, as well as the Middle East, kind of the vagabond gypsy pathways, right? So, and like we discovered, uh, everything is important. So uh, I really hope uh, you have a fun time studying this. Let me know if you need some help. I'd be glad to work with you. My phone number is 773-321-8181. I really take text only, um, or you can just email me, um, and I'd be glad to like work with you. And like I said, I've been talking with people from around the world, I see another person from the Philippines. I see a friend of mine from San Francisco here um, and some other people around. Let me just look at questions in case there's any last minute questions. 
Oh, yeah. So, um, I do have a map page. So, I did post all the links uh, to all of this. Um, and I definitely hope, <clears throat> you know, we're looking at 2D views and 3D views of the planet. Um, and it does take a little while to load, but I definitely recommend uh, grabbing all these maps. Um, and then I have um, kind of a new page here that I've been working on. And you can grab this here if you'd like. Human population farming map, that's the one that we talked about a lot as well. Um, you'd be uh, really wise to try to diagram this one out. It also has aquifer maps. This is a regular um, just population and aquifer map. Um, and this is population only map. So as well as there's, you know, almost a hundred other maps here um, that different types that don't necessarily just focus on population. Um, but there's so much to look at. Looks like I got a stray cat stopping over here. I'm going to go try to do something else. This has been a very extensive conversation. Just wanted to remind everyone um, that uh, take a look at everything. Like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity as you get older uh, before you pass from this planet. Uh, it really is a big deal to try to understand you know how it all works. Um, so try to take a look. It will help you with your work uh, wherever you are working around the planet um, and trying to see uh, how this fits together um, and try to look at the wildlife maps and everything. So thank you so much. I really hope this has helped you out.